Hi, I'm Riley with the Blueprint Solutions Training Department, and today we're looking at the new user-initiated QuickBooks synchronization workflow. This video is primarily for practices who've been integrated with QuickBooks prior to version 4.0 and are now navigating this transition. Prior to the upgrade, the Blueprint OMS integration with QuickBooks used an always-on synchronization model that exchanged data with QuickBooks continuously. As of 4.0, this has changed to a user-initiated synchronization model, the main benefits of which include increased reliability and no requirement to keep the accounting link running at all times. Let's see this in action. Right now, I'm logged into this system's accounting computer, meaning the one hosting the QuickBooks company file, as you can see here. Previously on the accounting computer, there would have been a green tab to the left of the patient browser at all times, in which certain users could monitor the QuickBooks synchronization. But now, that tab is under the Accounting drop-down menu, and accessed via the QuickBooks synchronization option. Administrators can control user access to this screen via the Accounting synchronization privilege located in the Setup menu. This privilege will be given by default to owners, plus to any users who'd previously logged into Blueprint OMS at the accounting computer. Now, this QuickBooks synchronization tab is a bit different from the accounting tab we saw in previous versions of Blueprint OMS. Let's take a look at the differences. First, at the top, the path to the QuickBooks company file is displayed. Ensure that the company file path you see here corresponds to the company file that is integrated with your Blueprint Office Management System. If you move the QuickBooks company file, you can change the file path by clicking on this hamburger icon. Note that if you would like to change the company file itself, meaning replace it with another one, you will need to contact our technical team for a reintegration. Underneath the company file path, we see the time that the accounting activity in Blueprint OMS was last synchronized to QuickBooks. With this new synchronization model, a user at the clinic will be able to synchronize accounting activity as often as they see fit. And here we have three more tabs. Let's focus first on the most important one, Synchronize. It displays in various categories any queued up accounting messages that need to be sent to QuickBooks such as updates to catalog items, customers, and vendors, as well as any new transactions that have occurred since the last time the accounting information had been synchronized. I can review them here by going through the categories and start the synchronization. For this to happen, the QuickBooks company file has to be open, but it only has to be open while the synchronization is occurring. And as it occurs, you will see whether attempts to transmit specific messages have succeeded or failed. A bit later, we'll look at why certain attempts might fail. In this case, we can see that all attempts have succeeded. All right, I can see that the system is up to date. And if I right click on one of these items, I can view it in the accounting system. Or I can view the transaction details in Blueprint OMS. Now I can refresh. At this point, I can see that there are no new transactions that need to be synchronized. I'll start creating more transactions so that we can see more behavior that this QuickBooks synchronization tab can exhibit. In this other tab, I'm just about done creating a new patient file. Note that until the new patient has items in their sales history, or until I loan this patient a hearing aid from inventory, there will be nothing for me to synchronize. But when I create a sale, there will be something to synchronize, and that would be a customer and an invoice. The invoice isn't visible here yet because the customer hasn't been synchronized. But once the customer is synchronized, you will see that there is an invoice for this customer that will also need synchronizing. Now 
Now it's visible in the Transactions tab. As well, if I were to go to Accounting, enter Bank Deposit, and enter Deposit, I might see some caution symbols corresponding to payments or refunds that do not exist in the accounting system. Nevertheless, I can save a deposit and I might see an error message once I try to synchronize. I'll be able to deal with that error message, as we'll see. Similarly, if I were to go to Accounting, enter third-party payments, To enter a third-party payment, I might see in this column that some of these invoices might not exist in my accounting system. Then, when I try to synchronize the payment and the payment application, the payment application may fail, but I will also be able to deal with that manually. And also, to track the manual completion of these applications, as we'll see. So now let's refresh the synchronization screen and see what tr new transactions we have to deal with. When I click on a message that failed to synchronize, I'll be able to see a helpful hint as to the specific reason that the attempt failed. In this case, the attempt failed because it references a payment that doesn't exist in QuickBooks. I apparently deposited that payment, but there was no such payment to deposit in QuickBooks. Similarly, I tried to apply a payment to an invoice, but that invoice didn't exist in QuickBooks. If I wanted to, I could just show these errors. I'll make a task for myself to enter these transactions manually and the Synchronization tab will show that there is nothing that it needs to be synchronized at this time. But the Manual Entry tab will show some tasks requiring me or one of my colleagues to go into QuickBooks and make some manual changes. So in this case, I would need to create the payment that needed to be deposited and the bank deposit. In this case, I would need to create the invoice to apply the payment to and also apply the payment to the invoice. Once I've gone into QuickBooks and done those things, I can mark these tasks as completed. And the tab will show that there are no transactions that need to be entered manually. Lastly, if your system prior to the upgrade had any outstanding skip transactions, you'll see them in the screen. Some of them are simple enough that you can right click and select retry to retry them. So in this example, we have a patient whose address is too long, so she couldn't be synchronized to QuickBooks. But I can fix it by abbreviating Avenue just for her QuickBooks customer profile. And it went through successfully. Other examples might be more complicated, and you might need to get in touch with our technical team to resolve them. After I attend to the rest of these old skip transactions, there will be nothing left in this view. Then, after I close and reopen Blueprint OMS and come back to the QuickBooks Synchronization tab, I will no longer see an old Skip Transactions sub-tab. This has been it for my demonstration of the new QuickBooks User-Initiated Synchronization Model. I hope you enjoy.